Hey gorgeous creators, visionaries, luminaries. One of my favorites by uh, someone that I follow on TikTok says, sentient balls of stardust. We dove into the last three gifts of March over the last three days. And the theme of March being that we get to be the blank that we want to be in the world. And we're having that masterclass energy of having opportunities to really level up in all of the ways, right? So today I want to talk a little bit about actually going from visionary to creator being. Hey, Sarah, good to see you. So back in February, when I did the energy update, it was a really strong opportunity for us to tap into the visionary energy, right? To practice zooming out, to see the bigger picture, to connect with your most aligned possibilities for what you want to create in the world. And then the energy of March was like, okay, let's practice with the perspective, multidimensionally being able to zoom in and zoom out. And there are so many beautiful visionaries on this planet, people who have ideas, dreams. Hi, Sunita. Let me know if you feel, whether you're live or on the replay, like you're one of those people. You've got ideas. You've got ways that you can see the earth would be so well served if we just did it this way or we just had this thing. Like you feel in your heart of hearts like there's a better way, there's maybe an easier way, there would be a more harmonious way to do things. Like, just, you got good ideas. There are visionaries upon visionaries here on the planet right now. And there are so many of them who have this capacity to either see into the future and like bring those ideas through. Maybe they're masters at seeing into like the future timelines, or perhaps they have these soul memories from either like ancient or future or parallel times where they have like lived in other dimensions or in other times and places where they can pull that wisdom through. Then there's just people that are inventors that have really good ideas. They're all converging on earth right now because there's change to be made. There's so much that we can create. The little tiny humans here behind me are going to be living in a completely different world than we are right now because of how many people are here to create. Hi, Dan. <laughs> how many people are here to create change right now? The old systems instructors, they're being um, dismantled in front of our eyes because they're obviously not working. People are wising up to it. We've seen how much is not serving humanity. And in that space, there's this amazing opportunity for us to create some new Ooh. stuff. So how do these ideas actually become reality? How can we take the mental realm ideas, the dreams, the goals, the visions, and make it happen? And that's a really good question. I'm going to share with you some of the ways that I have been able to create in my life. Take the dreams and the goals, everything from being a best-selling author to a dance teacher when I had no business being a dance teacher to starting several different businesses that have supported me and my family and rippled out all of the magic into the world. Um, created, you know, more than six figures in sales, my first year online business, all kinds of things. I want to share that with you. I am just going to send my tiny human away because she's cute and awfully distracting. But the idea of being a visionary is amazing. But what is what good is it without actually taking the ideas and like making something tangible out of them? If we just have ideas and dreams and goals and we never make anything grounded and physical out of them, then they're just dreams, right? So we have this responsibility to learn how to create, to be creator beings that we already are. And don't get me wrong, there are certain people whose design is mostly to be the visionary and to speak the ideas out and then for other people to grab the ideas and like run with them. There's also other people who have the design of just being the builder, right? Like to take other people's ideas, alchemize them and like create them in form. But if you want to be the, the most responsible creator, there is this really amazing opportunity for you to learn how to be both the architect and then also the builder of that reality. 
I think I got that terminology from Lee Harris about a year ago. He's like, most people are one or the other, an architect who can draw the designs and like have the vision or a builder, right? So how can we be both? It takes a whole ecosystem. It takes a lot of balance and harmony. We have all of the elements that we have to put together. So if something is hanging out in the dream realm, in the goal realm, there is this need to physicalize it, to make it tangible. The very first thing that I like to say is to take it from that idea realm and put it through your physical body and then out into the world. And there's a few ways you can do that. You haven't made it real and tangible like, you know, something physical yet, but to physicalize it in the beginning, we have to use our voice. Our voice is our most powerful creation tool. So if your dreams stay in your mind and you never write them down or speak them out loud, even if nobody's listening, uh, it doesn't get the process started. This has also been like scientifically proven. People who write down their goals are something ridiculous, like 80% more likely to achieve them. Like goal setting or intention setting are basically taking our dreams, our visions, our goals, running them through the filter of our body and then grounding them into this reality with our movement, with our action. Speaking things out loud is also powerful because the tones in your voice are tapping you into your creative power and your essence. If we remember, uh, all of the major traditions say something like, in the beginning there was the word. Om, the primordial frequency was the sound that created reality, right? There's just all of these different tangible stories about how the power of your words will create your reality. I love sharing this tidbit of information as well to visionaries and creators who wanna know that they actually have magic in them abracadabra that magical phrase actually means in ancient aramaic i create as i speak so writing things down speaking them out loud is so powerful especially if you have a group or container of people who are also holding space like incubating those ideas and we have to get the body mind and soul in alignment so we can take the aligned actions towards creating things because here's the thing if we are out of alignment we're not actually going to be able to make the steps towards creating what our dreams and visions are in this reality it's like the difference between walking straight ahead and maybe taking you know the scenic route but like walking towards your destination and walking in circles so the body needs to be on board the body requires that conduit and channel to your intuition, your creativity, your muse. That's one of the first things. So having the body in a calm state as opposed to a super stressed out activated nervous system is important because when our shields are up and we're in fight or flight, there's all kinds of distortions that come through. And what we think might be our intuition speaking might be our fear, might be our ego, and that can stop us from actually taking action, right? There can be all kinds of blocks that we can put up from ourselves that are coming from our egos, trying to keep us safe and alive. There can be belief systems that we need to address, that we need to make from the subconscious into consciousness as well. There are belief systems that basically cock block our creations ones that I encounter all the time with my clients and friends would be the perfection belief system where uh, they can't get started unless they know how to do it and they have to know how to do it perfectly. And if they can't do it perfectly, then there's no point in even starting. Like that is you cock blocking your creation powers. If we always wait for the perfect moment or for all of the know-how, all of the knowledge, we are not gonna get anything done. The visionaries who create in this reality are the ones who are able to take aligned action without knowing all of the hows because the actions actually create clarity. When we take a step forward, whether or not we fall on our face or not, whether we realize we're going in the right direction or the wrong direction, it gives us 
data. It gives us information. So we need to actually move, take action, do the thing in order to figure out and learn how to do it, right? Sometimes we think, I don't know how, so I guess I can't. In the words of the esteemed Marie Forleo, everything is figure outable. And honestly, most of us learn through doing because that's how kids learn, right? They learn through experiences. And of course, from people telling them things and from, you know, seeing other people do things. But we learn the most effectively through doing, through trying, through making mistakes and then going, okay, that didn't work or that did work. And then, and then taking the next step. So that's the very first thing, getting in alignment with that relaxed nervous system so you can connect with your intuition, your creativity, your muse, and believing that you can actually take steps in the direction of what you want to create without knowing all of the details. So there is an element of trust that requires this feeling of safety in our bodies. And that feeling of safety, we can get through healing trauma if it's in us, getting support, um, shifting the belief systems that are telling us that we can't, all of those things, right? It's, it's never just one thing. But we need to feel that sense of safety and possibility and hope, it, like we, we can do it, in order to continue taking the steps forward, especially if things don't work, right? There gets to be an element of unrelenting optimism. If you're a visionary creator who wants to make manifest your, your ideas, your dreams, if you give up at the first roadblock, then you're done. You're done. And how many people have tried and failed and then be like, well, that's it. I guess I'm not meant to be an author. I guess I'm not meant to be a coach. I guess I'm not meant to have my own business. I guess I'm not meant to ever find love because you tried you failed, and then that was it. I've done that. I don't like being bad at things. But also, I have learned that being a beginner is okay, and things are gonna feel awkward at first when you're learning something new. New dance choreography, new like business procedures, new structures and systems. There's all kinds of things that are gonna be weird and awkward, and you're gonna screw up, and you're gonna make mistakes, and if we don't have hope and optimism and resilience, you're done. So resilience comes from supporting ourselves fully, mind, body, heart, and soul, taking care of ourselves, right? And not working so hard or diligently or alone that we burn out, right? If we throw everything at it and we don't take care of ourselves and then we like literally burn out to a crisp and then we're like, ugh, I guess I can't do it. It's too hard. No, you went too hard. And I've also done that one, right? We need to have the aligned action steps and the fire of the action being in balance and including rest, including getting support because we all, many of us run this program that we have to do it all ourselves. Also, a belief system that doesn't serve us when we're trying to go from visionary to creator being. You are not going to be good at everything. So one of the hurdles is to get over yourself and not try to do it all yourself, which is tricky, right? A lot of us have things like, I don't know, speaking from experience, a hyper independent trauma response from my childhood. Um, other people, you know, just have had other people mess it up for them. So they don't want to give their trust away. If we can move that belief system of not having to do it all ourselves and not having to do it perfectly and allowing ourselves to like rest, learn, integrate, make mistakes, and then go back out there, then we're going to have the capacity for creation that is sustained and long-term, right? Bringing in other people's support, bringing in experts, realizing that if you don't know how, somebody else out there might, and you don't have to do it alone. This is the biggest thing that I see is people feeling alone, believing they're alone, believing they have to shoulder the burden of the responsibility of creating their vision all alone. 
That doesn't work. Yeah, I'll make food in just a few moments. Love, can you give me three minutes? Sure, no. <laughs> So, I made this one, right? I made her, but not all alone. Dada. <laughs> yeah, Dada helped with that. So, Dada. we, as humans, require support in creation on the most biological levels, right? We can't do it independently yet. We cannot just, like clone ourselves or like divide ourselves and you know create something so why do you expect to create a business on your own or like this vision that you have this dream a book whatever it is that you're wanting to create why do you think you can do that alone it's another distortion another program that has kept us from really tapping into the power of community you have your expertise other people have their expertise and sure you can learn a lot of things but if it's not in your zone of genius and it really is hard for you, then maybe it might be worth it to get support from somebody who is a master at that, who can help you bring your vision to life much more quickly. Now, that's not to say that you don't get to learn things on the journey, but there's a difference between things that uh, you don't want to learn, but you have to because it's important for your vision and things that are are not actually for you to learn because someone else already holds the keys and only you can discern what that is and also it changes at different stages of the vision when you're maybe just starting out let's say in business you might have to do everything yourself but as you grow if you try to hold on to it so tightly and do everything yourself again you're gonna burn out right and you're not gonna have that collaborative energy to help you create things in form so we need the body to be relaxed, to bring the visions into form. We need to have the belief systems in check and move through any blocking subconscious beliefs that are keeping us from feeling like we can. We gotta have the feeling that we can, that it's possible with the hope, the optimism and the resilience so that when mistakes happen, we can handle them. We can be resilient, we can do the thing Anyway, we can actually become better through the mistakes. It's really important. And then it's having the patience to work with the organic timing, right? To start with the ideas, start by writing it down, then asking, what's the next right thing? And following those intuitive threads, the intuitive hits that are going to bring you to the thing, even if they don't make sense. That's the really impressive part about this entire experience of creation manifestation coming the visionary into that creator builder not everything is going to be linear and not everything is going to make sense following the next right thing the breadcrumbs the trail the connections the opportunities the intuitive hits that will bring you further than anything else because you're going to get the collaborations the codes of information to maybe just the inspiration right if you're trying to write a book and then you're hitting up writer's block and you have this inspiration that you need to go on a vacation and you're like no no I can't do that I have this deadline I gotta write the book maybe the vacation or maybe the visit with a friend that you're being you know called to take is the thing that's gonna bring you the next step right it's all part and parcel of creating and there's so much more to it but I want to leave you with this. Most of us that are visionaries that came here to create and change on this planet, remember places where manifestation and creation were like instant. You could think it and then it would like, it would just be there and you'd be like, awesome. And so we're not used to the slower forms of creation that are required on this planet. I want to remind you about organic timing and divine timing. Uh, yes. Can you open it? You can have a little bit of mango this juice. See, little... she's really smart and she knows if I'm like doing a live or something like that and she asks me for something, I am a little bit more likely to say yes because I don't have the um, incentive or drive to argue with her. So I, uh, I appreciate that she will manipulate the situation to her advantage. <laughs> so we get to do this together. And we get to do it with patience, friends, because creating a vision in form, it takes time 
it takes it's like gardening it's like it's like growing anything on earth growing a baby growing a plant building a house it literally takes time and so many people give up when they've basically just planted the seed watered it once and been like ah, where is this thing that i'm asking for and it's like just, and I can dig up the flower seed and be like, where, where aren't you blooming? Where are you? If you rip a fetus from your body before it's fully formed, it has to be in the NICU, right? Like there are problems when you try to create something too quickly. So that patience comes when you have the trust. When you have the trust that things do take time. And just because it's not here now doesn't mean it will not be. There are so many things that are so worth it that people give up on when they're halfway there or a quarter of the way there or worse, like right next to the finish line. So your success is inevitable if you don't give up the creators, okay? Every mistake you make, every rejection you have, everything you mess up, it's just information that is bringing you what you need so that you can continue creating. Okay. There's so many examples of this. I think Walt Disney was rejected from financing for Disney World or Disneyland, whichever one, the first park he built, like 38 times. Could you imagine if he had just given up on that 37th time, 38th time, and he didn't ask the 39th financing firm? Like, we would have no Frozen 2, Moana, all of those things. <laughs> right? And so much more. So... These are pieces of the ecological system that has to be in place inside you so that you can manifest and create in the physical. We take it from the idea realm and we, with our intention, plant the seed and then we have to give it the right nutrients, right? We need the right beliefs, the right feelings that are going to inspire the aligned action for creation in community with each other with trust and resilience and together we're going to create a lot of magic here so this was my 51st of 365 lives this year thank you so much for being with me beautiful conscious creators and uh yeah if you have questions if you have any of these topics that i shared about the general creation scheme if you have questions about them leave them i'd love to get in deeper to any one of these topics because we could open them up and uh, really deep dive. So have a beautiful rest of your day and I will connect with you tomorrow.